question would be, if this was your dog, yeah. what, what would you do? My second question is, if this was your dog, would you have done the, would you do the MRI? Without a doubt. Let me get the pink sheet. Hey. Doc. Hello, how are you? Good, and you? All right, how was your weekend? It was amazing. Amazing, <laughs> I need to hear more. <laughs> It's easy, but they really make things easy. <laughs> wow. For it being this sort of major change, like, so many people sound so positive about it. Like, <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> no, I, I mean, un unless you're, like, joking. That, no. Like... <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see Blue. What's up with Blue? Other than she's incredibly nervous. Super <laughs> nervous. Don't be nervous. So Blue is our three-year-old female spade American Bulldog Pit Mix. We're coming in today for behavior changes. Um, so she was adopted about a year and a half ago. When she was initially adopted, she Hi, consistently was spinning to the right, just constantly circling Good, small circles to the right. Like when she was excited or just like anything? Randomly triggered, there's no reason to rhyme to it. She'll just be spinning. Okay. Hi, we're nice. <laughs> Look at those chompers. Yeah, ah, smile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, if there, if she gets really excited and she doesn't know how to express herself, then she'll go out and spin. We have a, I have a large backyard, and sometimes I can put her out there and she's happy as a clam for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and other times she goes into a corner and starts to spin. So the, the nice thing is her neurological exam is normal. So I mean, she's alert. Yes, she's a little stressed, but she walks normally. She knows where her right. feet are. All, feet are. I can't find any evidence of pain or incoordination. All of the nerves around her face are normal. All of her reflexes right. are normal. The question I, I sort of ask myself whenever I hear of a dog walking in circles is, is it a, a neurological problem, me, meaning a physical problem in the brain, or is it right. more of a behavioral problem. So I, I guess the the neurological things that come to mind when, when I hear something right. like this would either be a, a problem with the brain and, okay. and the, the things that we think of, I guess that I'm talking about from a neurological standpoint would be a, a physical, physical structural problem in the brain. You know, things like a malformation right. or inflammation of the brain. Things that I don't right. think are very likely in, in her case, right. just usually those are things that, you know, the dogs don't act normal in between episodes. It's not an episodic nature. Right. So the, the second thing that I, I think of would be some form of irritation in her, her rear quarters, whether right. it's something like a skin problem. So, you know, occasionally we'll see dogs with, with fleas or actually mo more cats with fleas where you know right. they're, they're not itching they're not scratching but they'll act very painful and will sort of go at their the base of their tail and will chew at right. it and lick at it and things like that if this was your dog yeah what what would you do if this were my dog i would be going to a behaviorist i would not be doing okay. an mri today I, I would be doing the medication trial because you know okay. many times it it can take a month or, or longer to to get in, you know, with, with, with rehab. You got it. Give me 10, 15 minutes or so to get these medications in and get her on up to you, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you, bye-bye. Hello? What's up? Hey, Dr. DeVita. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you, again. <laughs> I'm coming over there. Thank you. Hola. How do I prescribe a medication? Okay, close out of whatever you're doing. Uh -huh. There it is. No! You found it. <laughs> well, how did that add and dispense? Wait, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Current medication. I, 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 I'm on clinical. Here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna refresh this. And... Boom. Okay. Okay, cool. It's all there. Refresh. <laughs> Thanks, bye. Can you walk me through how do I look at records? Oh, Coming in today for progressive non-ambulatory paraparesis. On the seventh, we became painful. Um, we got meds and rads. The ninth, we started medications because we were super painful. 
for between the ninth and today, we have progressively gotten more weak. So I was calling to talk with you about John John. Okay. He's painful and his rear limbs are very, very weak. He's able to move them. If we sort of support under his rear end, you can see that his back legs move, um, but he's not strong enough to stand up on his own. And his problem is in his mid-back spinal cord. So his front legs are normal and his back legs are, are weak and wobbly. So that tells me the problem's affecting the spinal cord of his back. And then the third thing that I can tell from his examination is how severe it is on a scale of one to five with five being the most severe, he's a three, which means he's still able to move those back legs but is not strong enough to stand up and walk. Th that's basically what I can tell you just by looking at him. Um, okay. I cannot tell you what the cause is, but a five-year-old dachshund that was normal a week ago and has gone from being painful to not walking, the number one thing that we see is a slipped disc. It's not necessarily that you know he hurt himself or he injured himself or he you know did something or jumped off something just his discs are not the normal jelly-like consistency that they should be you know I, I have dogs that go into their crate at night and and slip a disc you know there, there was no trauma or anything dramatic like that assuming it's a slipped disc with surgery i have like 95 percent chances of fixing it Whereas if it's one of those things that does not require surgery, the likelihood of fixing it is much, much lower. My second question is, if this was your dog, would you have done, the, would you do the MRI? W without a doubt. For what it's worth, I guess, you know, one, I think about it that way with literally every person I'm talking to is, you know, what would my recommendation be if this were my dog, my sister's dog, my parents' dog, etc. cetera. And, and two, I, I have had a dog. Um, we, we adopted her, she was a category five. She, she was my brother-in-law's dog and was in another state and he was out of town. She didn't get the opportunity for surgery, but um, we adopted her after it because you know, she was a paralyzed dog that, that couldn't walk and every day for 11 years, you know, I, I was reminded, gosh, if I had the opportunity to, to fix this dog sooner, I, I would take it. Okay, let's go forward with the MRI and see what happens. John John's been admitted. John John's checking in, needs blood work catheter MRI. So we just finished Toby's surgery. Toby's the dachshund that was paraplegic with intactic pain perception. Um, big slip disc at T13L1 on the right. And now we're going into surgery with John John. He's got a big whopper of a disc at T13L1, kind of right on midline, a little bit more, slightly more left sided. So we're gonna go in from the left, but dark bulge that's compressing the spinal cord is the disc. So that's what we're going into now. It's Eight-ish. Gotta read the tab. 